Help support AMTV by becoming a patron, an AMTV staff member, and following us over on Twitter. Hi there guys, it's Adam Martin here. And welcome back to a brand new video, and today we're going to be talking about BBC's Doctors, and specifically that recently it's had its final day of production, so no more new episodes are going to be made. Now, we did touch on this sometime last year when they announced that Doctors was going to be winding down. The last episode is going to air sometime in October or November of 2024. And I know many people were upset about this. Seems there were a lot of Doctors fans out there. I personally wasn't one of them. I hadn't really watched it all that much, dipped in and out with some episodes, some clips there. But it's undeniable that it was a great uh, training or a great starter ground for actors. And not just for actors, but for the creatives involved as well. Production crews teams, all that sort of stuff. So this was a big blow to the industry, certainly. And uh, one of the writers as of recently, this is Philip Ralph, he's recently done a very long Twitter thread talking about this and why this is such a blow for the industry and some of the possible reasons behind it. And I thought it'd be really interesting to just read it and share it with you guys. I will say it is quite a long thread. So this is one of those videos where you don't necessarily have to watch, you know, watch me or watch it. You can open another tab, have this on in the background. It's completely up to you, but I will be showing each tweet of this thread on screen as well. So he says, Today, that being March the 1st, is the last day of filming for BBC Doctors, a show that has run for 24 years, employed thousands of people, produced more than 4,500 episodes, will call cut for the final time. As a writer on the show for the past 19 years, I'm personally impacted, along with hundreds, by the disastrous decision to axe it. So on this day when the show ceases production, though it will remain on screen until November, here is a thread into why I believe it matters that it's been cancelled, who is ultimately responsible, and what comes next. Doctors filmed 200 plus episodes every year, each one starring the regular cast, plus up to three guest actors, each one written by a writer, each one made by a full production crew, each one produced, shot, and edited in Birmingham. In one fell swoop from today, all of that is gone. I will be interjecting at points as well, obviously, to give my thoughts. Doctors was a huge thing for, like, the Midlands area, you know, the Midlands for TV production and, again, getting people all involved there. And as he said, each one is made by this production crew, produced, shot, edited in Birmingham. So already that's a blow to that region in terms of TV production. From its very inception, Doctors was a show that offered two crucial things that helped to sustain a thriving industry, opportunity and experience. 200 plus episodes every year where new and seasoned creatives got the opportunity to work, learn, fail, experiment and play. Over 600 guest actors every year likewise got the chance to work, be seen, renew their faith in their abilities and keep going. A writing team of up to 60 writers crafted original, bonkers, moving, real and often surreal stories based around the lives of our regulars. There is no other show in the UK industry that offers such variety of storytelling, everything from high drama and tragedy to farce, dream sequences, standalone single plays, themed weeks on important subjects, you name it, we wrote it. And absolutely, he's spot on in terms of particularly actors getting their spot. I've had tons of friends in the acting industry who say they got their first TV credit on Doctors and they've gone on to do further things or, you know, they were feeling a bit dissatisfied with the industry because it is a tough industry to be a part of no matter what role you play and being in doctors sort of renewed their faith that yes I am a good actor you know I am good enough to be to be seen to be cast in these things and likewise I imagine it's for creatives as well those who work behind the scenes and I do believe Philip touches more on that a little bit later so let's continue doctors was always a place where people new to tv could get their first experience for the screen it also sustained experienced creatives all of that opportunity and experience is now gone and there is nowhere in the industry for all of these people to go. The TV industry is contracting. Production across the board is way down. Beck2, which is a, one of the unions, recently surveyed its members and found that 68% of them are currently out of work. Doctors was a much needed finger in the dam of this terrible situation, and now it's gone with nothing to replace it. That is quite a staggering finger, 68% of this particular union's members who are currently out of work. That's insane. And yes, the TV business is very hard to get work in anyway. But as Philip says, Doctors was like a constant, a finger in the dam as he puts it. Something that people of all levels of experience could rely on or at least reach out to to try and sustain that work. And that is now, as of March the 1st, 2024, been wiped out. And he is right about the TV industry and contracting as well. We've talked about this numerous times, you know, article after article, news bit after news bit, saying that the cost of making television is going way up. 
quote unquote traditional television is dying, there's you know, the tastes are changing. It's so difficult. Without opportunity and experience, the TV industry is simply not a sustainable profession. Now, you might well point me toward a million schemes and opportunities for new writers, producers, and crews to gain early career experience, but if there is no work available for them beyond that, and even experienced creatives are unable to find work, then you simply do not have a viable industry. And that is true because that's been said to me, oh, well, you know, I've seen adverts for this broadcaster's doing a scheme, this broadcaster's doing a scheme, and yet for the time that scheme runs, that's great, you've got work, but that, you know, I think Philip's more talking about the springboard beyond that. You know, 20, 30 years ago, I'm sure people on those schemes could springboard into a multitude of different uh, projects from different UK broadcasters, and he's claiming that the, sh you know, the volume of that work just isn't there. Mid-career creatives were also able to sustain themselves by working on doctors. They could hone their skills, gain experience, keep the roof over their heads, and now they can't. Without opportunities like this, there are less people to draw from to sustain the industry. Because the only people who can keep going are those who can already afford to do so, and we know all too well that this excludes those from less well-off and more diverse backgrounds. The soaps are collapsing, mid-scale drama is contracting, and this leaves just the high-profile writers and creatives succeeding, and everyone else scrabbling around for scraps, hoping to somehow win the lottery and get onto an existing show, or even more miraculous in the current climate, get their own original series idea commissioned. There's no career ladder left. There's incredible good fortune, or there's nothing. And that's no way to build and grow a sustainable industry. Again, spot on. I mean, the accusation about it's those who can afford it can carry on, I'd say there's absolutely truth in that. We've seen this time and time again with the people cast. A lot of people in work come from upper class backgrounds or, you know, people with very wealthy parents or people who are connected in the industry. You know, the term Nepo baby, that's where that comes from in particular. And yeah, the soaps are collapsing. How many times have we talked about in the last year alone about soaps either cutting back production? I mean, wasn't it announced recently that Hollyoaks is dropping to three a week or something like that? You know, constantly the soaps are being withdrawn or scaled back and yeah mid-scale drama is contracting as well because he does have a point that it's the writers you know whose names keep popping up on the face of like new dramas and new programs you know writers who have established themselves who are successful and they are great they are fantastic and of course it's great to see those new series commissioned but they're only going for the success stories there is a lack not just in tv you see this in film and this is across the world there's a lack of originality at the minute or at least a lack of original programming or content being pushed forward to the masses they only want successes sequels remakes reboots we've seen this for years and yes i know part of that is about the production costs like i say producing original drama in particular can be very expensive particularly when you don't know whether you're necessarily going to make that money back if people are going to take to it but that used to be part and parcel of television production. You, know, you used to be able to do that and almost get away with it, but it's just, it's not the case these days. So the loss of Doctors is clearly disastrous for those who worked on the show. It is obviously disastrous for the industry, and I would argue it is also disastrous for the tone of public discourse. Now hear me out. In a sea of TV shows that insist on telling us that human beings are venal, angry, violent, self-serving, and resolve their disputes through fights and slanging matches, Doctors was always a calm voice of sanity and reason. Yes, we featured the odd murder, the odd argument, the odd villain, but our stories were always based on decent people trying to be decent to each other, as the vast majority of us do in real life. That's actually an interesting point. Again, I never really uh, took in Doctors all that much when it was on, but that raises an interesting point because not just in like soap operas, but dramas too, yeah, it is often a lot of like the, the violence and people are angry, self-serving. And yes, there are people like that out in the world and sometimes we, we may exhibit those traits ourselves. And I know the argument is they make for compelling television and nine times out of 10 they do, but I think there was nothing wrong with having a more, as he puts it, a calm voice of sanity and reason in the midst of all that. To have everything that intense would be quite overwhelming for anybody. The stories we tell about ourselves impact on how we see ourselves. Doctors was always a hugely diverse show, telling stories with kindness, empathy, and understanding. It reflected the changing world we live in, whilst never seeking to demonize or other. The importance of the power of positive storytelling grows stronger every day. The axing of Doctors is a tragedy for individuals, industry, and society as a whole, whether you watch the show or not. So why on earth was it cancelled, and who is responsible? Before we get into this bit, I, I do agree, you know, it is, I'd say more of a tragedy for the industry. Again, having not watched it, I can't speak to myself as like an individual viewer. 
but definitely for the industry. Don't get me wrong, no TV show has the right to continue to exist if ratings fall or tastes change. But Doctors was a success. Its ratings were high, its audience was loyal, it cost next to nothing, and the benefits of making it clearly far outweighed the expense. I guess when he means ratings were high, you know, we've looked at ratings before. Doctors, at least early this year, has never appeared in the top 50, but I guess it means for its slot, you know, an afternoon drama, I guess that's what he means for that particular slot of the day against whatever competition there was, its ratings were high, and that is to be, you know, uh, commended. And audiences loyal as well. They find that the, the midday soaps or dramas tend to have a very loyal audience. We've seen that throughout TV history. And when he says it costs next to nothing, I imagine a lot of the sets, you know, were stand-in sets, obviously reusable, so you're mainly paying for your crew, your actors and stuff like that. So compared to other dramas or long-running shows that require a lot of sets, a lot of moving or a lot of external filming, Doctors was relatively cheap by comparison, but you know what I mean by that. When the show was axed in October, the reasons given were super inflation in drama production, the cost has increased significantly, and further investment is also now required to refurbish the site where the show is made, or to relocate it to another home. Now, you can argue the rights and wrongs of this decision and the logic behind making a cut so devastating to drama production in the Midlands and the wider industry's future sustainability, but there can be no doubt that the BBC had to save money somewhere. Why? The BBC's budgets are being squeezed like never before. The license fee has been frozen for the past two years, and the entire model of funding for the corporation is under constant threat. Public viewing habits are changing, the streamers are taking even bigger slices of the pie. But we all know that the reason the BBC is under so much pressure is because of the relentless, ideologically driven campaign of destruction by the incumbent Conservative government. Now, as you might have guessed from that, a lot of the following tweets are going to be a bit more political in nature. There will be times probably while I interject to stress whether I agree or disagree, but I just want to let you know the next chunk of this uh, does verge on the political, absolutely. I mean, before we dive into it though, he's, again, we've talked about the BBC being squeezed, the license fee being frozen is a devastating thing for the BBC because that essentially stops their funding model from growing. And I've said ad nauseum, is the license fee antiquated? Does there need to be an adaption? absolutely but it's integral to how the bbc runs and they're already having to make tens of millions of pounds worth of cuts so doctors was just one of many in the recent casualties we've seen for the past 14 years the tories have waged an all-out war on the bbc backed by their willing army of bias accusers all desperate to close down this most diverse progressive complex flawed yet still brilliantly public funded service and that's that line I definitely agree with. The BBC is not perfect. I've said as much before. It is flawed. It has been flawed. It probably still is in some respect. But the diverseness, the, the diversity, I should say, the progressiveness, all of what it offers is something really unique to broadcasting. And it's something that we've cultivated and should be proud of. Now, where else in British civil society can we spot other institutions under such attack? That's right. Everywhere. The NHS, schools, the judiciary local councils, the civil service, the transport network, you name it. If it provides a public service, then the Conservative government have systemically undermined it, defunded it, abused it, attacked it, accused it of bias or being woke, broken it into little pieces, sold it off to the lowest bidder, usually one of their mates, or themselves hiding behind a subsidiary company, and then urged us to accept private ownership and dividends for shareholders instead of any kind of public provision. To sum up that, He's not wrong, not really. Hang on, am I really saying that the demise of doctors is directly the fault of the Tories? Of course not. That would be ludicrous paranoia. But they are the direct cause of the state of the industry and the dearth of sustainability in the creative marketplace. They have created the conditions for anything that does not make a vast profit for shareholders to be seen as a failure. They are responsible for peddling the narrative that the arts and creativity are somehow woke, meaning progressive, open-minded, diverse, compassionate, they see the arts as a pastime of dilettantes and layabouts, that somehow everyone engaged in the arts is not a hard-working member of society, is an enemy of the people, and should be stamped out. And just to touch on that, speaking as someone who works in the arts myself as a creative, as I have been, you know, since I went to university and graduated, there are times where it really does feel, particularly from the incumbent government and over the past decade and a bit you know that we do feel like enemies of the people even though we can create this these bodies of work that can bring joy to tons of people that can you know make people happy make people entertained this despite the fact we give up so much of our time and effort and energy to this there are still times where 
like for me, my work doesn't feel valued, not by the audiences watching, but by just the state of this, uh, the state of the country and the system we live in. I, I work, I work all the time. You guys know this. I have several jobs. I do YouTube on the side, but I have several jobs I have to keep maintaining whilst also d dabbling in my active work and my creative work. And in terms of, you know, help, say for getting on the housing ladder, for example, you're practically nine times out of 10 as a creative, you are shunned. You are essentially laughed at because the system that is in place does not work for creatives. And I don't think I'm the first or will be the last to say that. So with what Philip's saying here, I completely understand that sentiment. They say they value the arts whilst attacking them at every possible opportunity. They have absolutely no concept of the true value of the arts because to do so would necessitate having a soul and a heart. They are about to face the most devastating electoral defeat in history because practically no one under the age of 50 will vote for them, here's hoping, and they are terrified, rightly so, because their time is over and they know it. The country is far kinder, more compassionate, more empathetic, more understanding, and more open to change than they could possibly allow themselves to contemplate. The Tories didn't cancel doctors, but they did create the conditions that are leading the industry to become ever more risk averse, stripped of anything weird, odd, open, curious, kind, grounded in day-to-day -day life, leaving space only for high concepts, big names, big stars. In a way, that sentiment, that sort of goes back, I guess, to the some of the early days of television where a lot of it was seen as very highbrow or high-end. As the BBC struggles, so too do advertiser-funded broadcasters as people are forced to tighten their belts thanks to the Tory-created cost-of-living crisis. Yesterday, Channel 4 announced that Hollyoaks is to drop to just three episodes a week. That's a whole lot more writers out of work. Are the Tories to blame for that too? Of course they are. Look at Nadine Dorries' relentless campaign against Channel 4 when she was culture sec. Oh god. Nadine, our old friend Nadine. Oh, what a character she was, eh? Particularly when it's a receipt of the taxpayers' money. It's not in receipt of licence fee money. It, no. it, it makes its money from commercial operations. Yeah. Um... The last thing these people want is a vibrant, thriving creative industry that asks genuine searching questions about who we are, who we want to be, and how we get there. All over the country, the arts are under threat like no time in living memory. Local authorities are slashing arts budgets as they face the consequences of 14 years of swinging cuts to their budgets from Westminster. Yeah, I mean, uh, Birmingham is a prime example. Birmingham, their arts budget, they're eventually going to cut that by 100%. A 100% cut. There are, of course, more high priority things, absolutely. But the arts is just as valid and needs to be treated as such. A healthy, thriving creative industry is a sign of a healthy, thriving country. And right now, the UK is anything but. We are in the last days of this appalling government of shills, thieves, fraudsters, liars, and conspiracy theorists. And of course, they are taking every opportunity to burn down everything good that remains whilst feathering their nests before they are finally thrown out. Doctors is but one victim of the destruction. Forced out by a BBC struggling to survive and institutionally blind to the devastation of the ripple effect of their decision will cause. The situation is truly bleak. So what comes next? Whew. This is supposed to be the point where I find my inner Jerry Maguire and pull out a miraculous manifesto to rally us all into fighting back, right? I'd love to be that sure of what would come next, but I'm only a writer. I'm only one voice. Still, here's what I know. I know that the arts have never been wiped out. I know it is always darkest right before the dawn. I know we are at our best when we are ingenious, employing every ounce of our creativity and skill to tell stories of the times we live in that really speak to people. Not telling stories of, I'm alright Jack, and screw everyone who isn't me, but stories of who we aspire to be, of community, empathy, compassion, curiosity, and joy. I believe that we need an industry-wide conversation, along with Beck2, Equity UK, and the Writers Guild, about how we can sustain ourselves through these dark days, and how we can make ourselves more vital and resilient going forwards. We need to ask ourselves how we can avoid a huge talent drain of experienced people leaving the industry, how we can make genuine opportunities available to people from as many wide and diverse backgrounds as possible. In short, how can we change to meet the future? One thing is certain, change always looks different to how we expect. Can we take more risks, make space for new stories, new voices, a new play for today, a new soap? New forms of drama we haven't even thought of yet. A new play for today actually would be really good. If you have never watched a play for today, the box sets released from the BFI on Blu-ray, they contain some cracking plays, which I highly recommend you check out. Really high quality stuff from back in the 70s and 80s. So a new strand like that, bring that sort of format back. I would be all for that, 100%. Maybe not driven by star names, but a space for new opportunities and experience for those who want to build sustainable careers. Can we build an industry driven not by magical thinking, 
but one that can grow, nurture, and sustain? I truly believe we can. I believe every crisis is an opportunity. Times of change are times of renewal. Every storyteller knows that endings are just beginnings in disguise. The loss of doctors is an unnecessary tragedy, yes, but it doesn't have to be the end of the story. The Tory government want to divide us against ourselves. They don't value us. They only value what they can steal. But they are yesterday's story. Today, we can write the story of what comes next. Let's start the conversation. And that is the full thread. Goodness me. I mean, first of all, massive props I want to give to Philip here because you can tell that writing all this, he's clearly very, I mean, understandably passionate. He's worked on Doctors for 19 years writing scripts for the show and for it to be, I guess, axed out of the blue when it was, when that announcement came through, must have been devastating because, you know, you work on a show for any amount of time like that, you develop that family culture with the people you're working with and to just have that cut out from underneath you must be truly devastating for real. But I appreciate him for being completely honest about his thoughts here. And I pretty much agree with everything that is written. How, you know, there is this stranglehold on the TV industry at the minute. The BBC in particular is fighting for its mere survival. Never mind keeping shows on the air. It's fighting for its survival at every conceivable turn because of the, the damage that's being done by external forces. And the creative industry as a whole. I mean, even myself as a regular actor, if you like, when I'm looking for work, I'm, there's definitely a lot less work than there was even just a few years ago in terms of what you could apply for. It's not even of the same quality. I'm reading more and more breakdowns, I'm amazed they're allowed to go up, that read really poorly, really vague, offer diabolical pay for what you're being asked to do, way under like the minimums expected. And it is just, to put it bluntly, it's a bit of a dire time to be not just an actor, but to be a creative right now. But I'm also with Philip that it isn't impossible and we shouldn't allow ourselves to be stuck in this rut as he said we're at our best when our when we are arguably at our best when we're at our most pressured or up against the wall that's where the like real beautiful art can be made whether that's on stage on tv and film however it is but i do i long and hope that especially in tv over the next few years we find a way particularly here in the uk to get out of this rut to start commissioning new original stuff more experimental stuff again the play for today strand you don't even have to call it that but something like that you know an original drama even if it's once a month rather than once a week, that could be, that could reinvigorate things. It really could. So yeah, a bit of a bit of a sad one, obviously. Again, with doctors winding down. But again, if you're a fan, they've only finished production today. You're still going to get episodes right up until November of this year. So you've still got nearly a year's worth of content to enjoy there. But you know, I, I just feel for Philip in this situation, for all the writing team, for all the production crew, the actors, everyone involved, really. I mean, as I said, I never really watched Doctors all that much, but having read this thread and just, you know, realizing the true devastating impact this is going to have just beyond the TV show, but on the industry in the UK as a whole, it's it's devastating. It really is. But anyway, that is all for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Do you agree with what Philip's saying? Do you agree with certain bits? Do you disagree with others? Are you sad that Doctors is ending? Let me know all that in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like on it and do subscribe as well. It really does help us out and we'd love to have you aboard. In the meantime, I've been Adam Martin from AMTV. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you next time. Thank you to our patrons for helping to support the show and a special thank you to Macra, Ethan Carberry-Holt, Bruce Danton, Globe of Reviews, Derek Chambers, Sean Nock, Dord Khan, Trev Hughes, AJ Mack 200017, Deck KP20, Simon Harrison, Evan Hart 38, and Jen, our AMTV staff members.